Hello and welcome back. I am a hacker and it's really nice to have you on board. In this video, we'll explore how the local file inclusion work. Or to be more specific, we'll explore how the null byte injection works. So if you're following along, you will notice that we are hacking into OS G-Shop from last three to four videos. If you haven't watched those, I will highly encourage you to watch those first and then come back to this one because in that we first set up the entire uh, juice shop on Hurugu and then we hacked into some of the vulnerabilities and we are progressing through it. So if you have watched that or if you understand those things, let's get started with this third video. Okay, so the first vulnerability that I want to exploit is this view another person's basket. You can see it's done, but it was mistakenly done by me while I was practicing. Anyway, the first thing I want to do is turn on the intercept in burp and then come over to the juice shop, click on basket or your basket, whatever you want to call it. And right over here, you can see we are moving the basket of the first person. You can just click on two and then click on forward or just turn off the intercept and then come back over to the juice shop and you can see we are viewing another person's basket. So this is how simple that is and this is how easily you can exploit this vulnerability. Anyway, coming back over to the scoreboard, in the start of the video, I said that we will explore this local file inclusion. In order to check out the local file inclusion, I will turn on a new terminal and in that I will write derb. If the derb is not already installed in your Kali machine, you can just install it by writing apt get install derb. And it will install the derb for you. If this doesn't work, just add a sudo apt get install derb and it will work. But in my case, the derb is already installed. So what I will do, I will write derb and then I will provide the URL that I wanna scan. If you are unsure about what derb is or want to know about derb, you can just come over to the Kali docs and you can find out everything about it. But just to give you an intro, derb is just a web content scanner. It looks for existing vulnerabilities or existing object in a website. It scans it, analyzes it and gives you the report. That's it. Now let's come over to, if you want to read about it, you can just go to the Kali docs or any other blog. You'll get complete info about it. But if you are sure about it and if you want to use it, here's how you can use it. You can just copy the link that you want to scan and just copy it. Then write derb in the terminal and paste the URL in front of it and press enter. It will scan and give you the report. So the derb will take some time in scanning. So I'll see you once the scan is done because I don't want to waste your time. Okay, the scan is still running, but let the scan be and let's continue our work. So here you can see we have some vulnerabilities or some challenges that says forgotten sales backup, forgotten developers backup. And I think so there is an Easter egg as well, which would be somewhere right over here, an Easter egg. So let's try to analyze the scan. So the first URL that it found is the asset. So let's come over to the browser, copy this link and add assets in front of it. So nothing is in this link. So this link is no, of you, no use to us. The second link that it found is the FTP. Let's copy that out and let's just find out what that has or what it, what it is like. Let's analyze that. So once I open the FTP link, you can see that we do have a lot of different files. So once you open that FTP link up, you would see that it does have one folder and a lot of different files. If you try to open this MD file, you would see that it will get open without any problems. Or if you are willing to open up another file, you would see that it will give you a problem. So here that MD file is, it just got opened without any problem. But when I try to open another file well, with another extension, it just throwed an error saying that you can just open a PDF or .md file. What 
this local file inclusion does or says is that it allows us to gain access to the forbidden files or forbidden areas or in other words what this null byte injection does is it gives us access to the forbidden files by fooling the server by making it believe that we are accessing either .md file or .pdf file. So let's do that. The simple way you can do that is by adding percent %00 in front of the file and then the extension that it allows. So the, it allows PDF. Let's just write percent %00.pdf. If I press enter, you would see that nothing happened. So there is another way as well, which is 2500.pdf. And if I press enter, you would see that the file just got downloaded. So what I can do, I can just go to my downloads, rename this file to whatever it was, press enter, and then open it up in Adam or whatever editor you would like to open it. So here that file is. Now you can do the same with another files as well. This was just one file. You can do the same with the Easter egg by adding percent %2500.pdf and you can download it. And you can see the Easter egg has been downloaded. You can do the same thing with encryption dot in or encrypt.py. Just add percent %2500.pdf and the file will get downloaded. And you can do the same thing with these files as well. So this file is getting downloaded, no problem. This is .md file, you can access it. And you can do the package.json. And you can do the same um, local file inclusion thing with this package.json as well, which is person25.pdf. This will fool the server in believing that we are just accessing the allowed extension or the files with allowed extensions. And we have downloaded the suspicious errors.yml as well. So let's come back over to the scoreboard and find out how much damage have we done. So if I come over, you can see that the Easter egg has been done. The next thing that we have done is the forge coupon. The next thing that we have done is the forge sign JWT and the developer one and the sales one is also done. So I think we have made a lot of damage to the OWASP juice shop and I think it's enough uh, for this video. In the next video, we'll explore the SQL injection part of OWASP juice shop. We did the initial SQL injection part in our second or first video, I don't remember. In the next video, we'll go deeper and we'll explore a lot of different techniques that we can do with the SQL injection. And we'll, we'll try to gain as much score as we can in the next video. Anyway, just to recap this video, in this video we explored how to access another person's basket by which was done by exploring the burp intercept and the next thing we did was to explore the local file inclusion which was pretty easy by just inserting a null byte injection and that's it. So this is pretty much it for this video. If you didn't understood anything, just leave a comment down below and surely, and I will come up with an answer. You can also read all about the local file inclusion and null byte in in injection in the link. I will link this down in the description so you can read about it and understand what that is and how it works. Anyway, this is pretty much it for this video. Till next time, enjoy hacking, stay cheeky bricky and peace out.